Welcome to our service at St Lawrence Gethling for this the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Please join with me in our call to worship. The kingdom of God is within us all. The kingdom of God is found in the most surprising of places. The kingdom of God is hidden in the everyday things of life. The kingdom of God is small but very precious. The kingdom of God is here and now. Let us worship God who reigns over the kingdom. Our first hymn is God is love, his the care. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. We say together the collect for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, Nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings 3, verses 5 to 12. Solomon asks for wisdom. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place, and Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during a night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you, and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern the, this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for a long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do whatever you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, 
nor will there ever be. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be. The New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. The parables of the mustard seed and the yeast. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all the way through the dough. And reading on from verse 44, the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. Then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The Parable of the Net Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad fish away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the word of the Lord. Gardening and baking have been familiar activities for many of us during the weeks of lockdown. So when we hear in the passage from Matthew's Gospel about sowing mustard seeds and mixing yeast with flour, we can immediately identify with these everyday examples used by Jesus in his parables. The people of Galilee would also readily identify with them as well. But do we really understand what Jesus is saying? Looking back over the last few weeks' readings, we can see that wherever he went, Jesus was attended by large crowds, eager to learn from this charismatic, itinerant preacher. Why a mustard seed? Well, it's one of the tiniest of seeds, probably the seed of a black mustard plant, which could grow into a bush of maybe three metres tall. The joy of a tiny seed transformed for the benefit of others, in this case the birds. Do not underestimate the tiny seed which may be planted in you and which through God's grace will grow. If you are good at baking, then you have something that is equally good. Put in the ingredients, watch them grow and provide the joy of good food for others to enjoy. The kingdom of God is like that, growing rapidly with such astounding effect from tiny beginnings and turning sinners into saints those who live for themselves into people who live for others. How can we be a seed that allows friendship, kindness and service to grow and provide the shade of blessing for others? This is the awesome power of God in action, transforming lives. Jesus is the sower of the seed. We are the seeds and the plant is the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God isn't something that has steeples and websites and Twitter accounts that lets you know it's there and does everything in a way to make you notice. No, you just find it in the everyday. 
Once you have found it, however, like the treasure in the field or the pearl, you really ought to do everything to hold on to it. It becomes your focus in life. And if that means selling everything to get it, then so be it. The final image is of a net, and again it's about something that works below the surface, unseen. More than that, it is not particularly choosy. Everything is brought in, and when it comes to separation, think back to last week's wheat and cares. We're reminded that it's not our place to decide who is a part of the kingdom of heaven and who is not. We must cast our net and share the good news of Jesus Christ with all we meet. It's not down to us to determine who is worthy or unworthy of hearing the gospel. The kingdom is abundant, hidden in the everyday. Go, seek, need, fish or whatever you do, it is there that you will find the kingdom. This selection of verses concludes with teachers of the law being compared to a house owner who brings both new and old treasures out of their store. This reminds us of the importance of the Old Testament, which points the way to Jesus, the Messiah. As a Jew, Jesus always upheld the importance of the Old Testament, and we are called to do likewise. Jesus' teachings are the new treasures being described in a time where teachers of the law are always referring to the teachings of the past. In our Old Testament reading, the story of King Solomon is an old treasure, like the law of Moses and the Ten Commandments. If God came to you in a dream by night and said, ask for whatever you want me to give you, what would you answer? Solomon never hesitated. He knew that on his own he could do nothing. He knew that he was totally dependent on God and how God could use his power through him. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? We can learn so much from Solomon's example if we are of a mind to. We can ask God to be in charge, to help us to have a listening heart so that we can become a seed for the growth of the kingdom. Let us pray. Jesus taught that where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. In this hour we come bringing our treasures, all that we have and all that we are. We come seeking your treasure. Treasure that doesn't fade, decay or disappoint. Share with us the treasure of heaven that we may boldly share it with others. Amen. Let us declare together our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Thank you to Elizabeth for our intercessions this week. Lord of love, we thank you for this day and for the wonderful gifts given to us and for our community, united in love and worship here at Gessling and Westfield. Help us to become the seeds that will grow and flourish so we can spread the harvest of your love. We praise you for our clergy, especially at this difficult time of separation in our church. Give us grace to continue to work together to your praise and glory in the Trinity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you have blessed us with the beauty of the earth and all living creatures. We pray that care will be taken for the environment around us. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, as she continues her royal duties. We pray for Her Majesty's government to do what is right and just as they prepare for the challenges ahead at this time of uncertainty. 
We pray for peace between nations, for justice and equality, for people facing hardships and starvation. We pray that the rulers will have a wise and discerning heart as you gave Solomon and to put their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those in our community. In a moment's quietness, we pray for those dear to us, our families, friends and neighbours. Lord, cradle them with your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for all those affected by the pandemic, those suffering from depression, anxiety and loneliness. We pray that now restrictions have been lifted, they can rebuild their lives and have hope for the future. We give thanks for the NHS and the care and devotion of all staff in hospital, hospice and care homes and all people caring for their loved ones. Bless them for their endeavours through the lockdown. May your spirit bring new hope, knowing you are there among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our loved ones no longer with us. We light a candle within our hearts for those who have lost their lives through the coronavirus. People's sadness and grief suffered without the touch of comfort of clergy or family and friends. Lord, help and reassure us by your Holy Spirit so that we may come to know your loving presence in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Then we come to our final hymn, Amazing Grace. We pray together. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take the smallest seed and produce life. Add yeast to the bread of life and it will grow. Find the hidden treasure in your life. Invest all you have in living for God. Cast wide your net and haul in the catch. All these blessings and more are yours from God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, there for you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.